So last year, my colleague Jeremy Bennett introduced our newly started project to develop GNU tool chains for the Core 5 processor family. So Core 5 is a der derivative of RIS the RISC-5 architecture with a number of custom instruction set extensions. So today, Enrico Tabanelli and I will provide an update on our progress over the past year. So where does Core 5 come from? So our starting point is RISC 5 an open and extensible instruction set architecture that most of you will probably be familiar with. And then we have an early RISC 5 research project, Pulp, that my colleague Enrico will tell you a little bit more about. Okay, thanks Jessica for introducing me. I'm Enrico Tabarelli and I am a PhD from the University of Bologna. Uh, the PAL project started to explore new efficient architectures for ultra-low power processing. The main aim is to develop an open scalable hardware and software research and development platform with the goal to break the energy efficiency barrier within a power envelope of few milliwatts, as well as satisfying the computational demands of IoT application, uh, which usually required uh, flex, um, flexible processing of data streams, usually generated by multiple sensors. Two important milestones of the project were RISCI and Ariane. RISCI is a four-stage core that implements the RV32 IMC ISA. It has an optional 32-bit FPU supporting the F extension and includes ISA extensions for DSP operations such as uh, audio loops, SIM um, instructions, bit manipulation and post-incrementing instructions. On the other side, we have Ariane. Ariane is a six-stage single issue in order 64-bit CPU, which fully implements the I, M, C, and D extensions. It implements three privileged levels to fully support a Unix-like operating system. Uh, to easily explore the design space uh, for new chips, for example, uh, the PULP project developed GDSOC, a full platform simulator supporting PULP architectures. Later in this presentation, I will introduce you the virtual platform more in depth and the work we did to enable testing GCC on GVSOC. Now, Jessica will continue with uh, the core family uh, course and uh, uh, from, from we, uh, which originated from the PULP platform. Okay, Jessica, you can go now. Great, thanks, Enrico. So finally, we have the Core 5 family of 32 and 64-bit cores developed by the Open Hardware Group. So as um, Enrico mentioned, this is largely derived from the Pulp Project cores. Um, so the Open Hardware Group is a global consortium of companies and universities, as well as other uh, institution, institutions, um, dedicated to creating high-quality silicon IP and tools for deployment in commercial projects. So in our talk today, we'll discuss a tool chain being developed for the first 32-bit Core 5 core, CV32E40P. So our plan is to support the five CV32E40P instruction set extensions shown here. And to make it clear that we're targeting um, Core 5, we'll use the vendor field of the target triplet. Thus, we have RISC-532 Core 5 ELF instead of RISC-532 Unknown ELF and all Core 5 instructions are prefixed by CV. Um, we provide additional architecture specifications to specify either um, all five Core 5 extension support by X Core V, or you can uh, just select individual parts. For example, um, hardware loop would be X Core V hardware loop. So the current status of the project. Um, at the moment, we've added support for all five of the instruction sets shown on the previous slide um, to the assembler and the linker. Um, work has also started in GCC where we're adding built-ins and pattern matching for these instructions where it's appropriate. Um, so earlier this year, GCC work was held up for a period of time until we had a suitable platform to test against. So I'd like to highlight three key activities over the past year that we'll discuss in further detail today. So the first is our approach to assembler testing, particularly how it may differ from that of RISC-5 and other architectures. I'll also um, discuss how we tested using inline assembler for GCC. Um, the second is how we overcame the blocker of having no existing target to test against. And lastly is the ongoing issue where we require a better mechanism for PSABI vendor specific linking relocations. So starting with testing. So here's an example of just one test to illustrate what we mean by comprehensive testing. So this is an assembler test looking at the first argument in the hardware loop setup. 
In particular, we test the boundaries of operand and result values as we anticipate this is where the majority of issues would occur. So for core five, one thing we noticed was the relative weakness of risk fives target specific testing. And for the assembler, we've added substantially to the existing tests. We took the preventative approach in recognizing where a problem may occur and writing tests in anticipation. However, these assembler tests will just check the syntax of the instructions, but we want to check that we've correctly understood the behavior of these instructions. So we're adding tests in GCC that use inline assembly to test the behavior of the assembler. So this is really important in ISAs like RISC 5 where we have custom extensions that are quite often not generated by the compiler. So we can't rely on the GCC regression test suite to find problems. So for example, in Core 5, we have uh, multiple, multiple instructions that can create a hardware loop. So at the, at the moment, a hardware loop is only generated from mem copy and mem set. And this only calls one type of instruction, CV set up by. So this one instruction sets up the start of the loop the end of the loop and the number of iterations. Um, so we also have other instructions that set up a loop. So we have CV setup, which is the um, non-immediate version. We have CV start I, CV end I, CV count. So all these different instructions that set up different parts of the loop, but these aren't generated by the compiler. So um, if we hadn't tested these using, using inline assembly, then we could have easily missed some bugs. And so also you'll notice here that the compiler test for core five haven't increased that much and that's because it's still a work in progress. So now we're going to move on to test targets for core five. So ideally we'd like to test using physical silicon, the FPGA and ASIC implementations, but these are not yet available. So therefore we'll use sim um, simulators in the meantime to verify our tool chain. So for performance tuning, we need strict cycle accuracy. And for this, we can use a Verilator model of the hardware implementation. And the Verilator model for Core 5 is um, currently in development. Um, so there are also some quick ways to create simulators. So the GNU tool CGEN is widely used to generate the assembler, disassembler and simulator automatically from a scheme description of the ISA syntax and semantics. LLVM's table gen can be used in a similar fashion. So we use these for lots of RISC-V projects within Embicosm. However, we're not using this for Core 5 as we have another solution that's even easier to adopt. So GVSOC is a simulator for pulp and pulp derivatives, such as Core 5. So this is great for functional correctness and easy to use in continuous integration. So now I'll hand over to Enrico, who will discuss how we extended GVSOC to support Core 5 and integrated it with the GCC regression testing framework. Okay, thanks, Jessica. Okay, let's talk about GVSOC, the simulator. GVSOC is a powerful simulator for RISC-V based platforms. It is a highly configurable and timing accurate event driven uh, simulator uh, that was born in the mainframe of the PAL project just to allow developers uh, to, for example, test new architecture functionality, for example, ISA extensions, and design new microarchitecture easily. For that purpose, GVSOC. Uh, uh, supports multi cores and uh, heterogeneous systems and enables simulating the full platform, modeling all the platform components, such as the core, uh, memories, uh, peripherals, and all the other components. The virtual platform enabled uh, uh, performance analysis based on a set of hardware counters and enables retrieving valuable debugging information to see how components interact between them. The system core is an instruction set architecture. Uh, consisting of a base RISC-V ISA, which can be easily extended with new extensions. Lastly, uh, the simulator uh, was calibrated with hardware and uh, currently has a uh, timing accuracy in between uh, 80 and 90 percent. Okay, after this uh, brief introduction on the simulator, we're going to dig a bit into its structure. Okay, the simulator is divided into a static configuration and a hardware platform configuration. The static configuration consists of all the components, the IPs supported by the simulation engine, while the hardware platform configuration is the actual subset of IPs that we will use at runtime to run our code on the simulation engine. Okay, from the simulation, we get 100% accurate functional results. That is really cool, for example, for testing new microarchitectures, but also valuable timing and debug information. 
In particular, uh, we can investigate uh, the events that are taking place uh, in each cycle in the pipeline and, uh, for example, having a look at the content of the registers. Uh, now let me show you an example of our platform configuration that uh, we need to specify at runtime. In the slide, I reported a fragment of a JSON configuration script available in the uh, open source uh, GitHub link uh, that I reported are under the specified path. This is a, a configuration that enables simulating a full platform which uh, that is integrating CV32 E40P core. Uh, here we are instantiating, first of all, all the required IPs. So we are instantiating the core as uh, such as uh, CV32 E40P, the L2 data memory, peripherals and timers and so on. As I previously said, GPSOC supports full platform simulation. For that purpose, it includes a runtime that supports a basic operating system. The runtime has been written in assembly to optimize, uh, to optimize it as much as possible, thus to, leverage, thus to leverage the power of the core five extensions, we integrated uh, the extension into the runtime when possible. Okay, as you can see from the slide, I reported just a fragment of a, a routine from the runtime post SOC event store ISM that is taking care of scheduling tasks. As you can see, there are both uh, base risk five instructions, but also core five instructions that we added. Another important step uh, in enabling uh, simulating uh, core five extension with the GBSOC simulator uh, consists of integrating the uh, the, the, the extension, so core file extension, into the instruction set simulator. Um, in the slide, I reported the fragment of the Python script that implements the instruction set simulator. As you can see, there are both uh, base risk five base risk five instructions, but also core five instructions that we added. It is necessary to add the binary encoded encoding for each instruction, but also some metadata that, for example, in this case, are operands description. In order to support the previously added instructions, it is also necessary to implement a callback function for each uh, new added instruction. When GVSOC executes an application code and comes across uh, an instruction, it will call it uh, its callback, which simulate the instruction behavior and timing. Here, the reported callback takes care of uh, the branch equal immediate instruction. From it, you can see that there are some special routines or special functions that uh, uh, are specific routines to support the performance counters. But more specially, there is a, a function ISS power and, and, account. And, and Rico, and Rico, you've lost your screen share. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, I think uh, I don't have the, the right, right right now. I don't know why. I don't have a... Okay, um... okay, right now I have the button, sorry. Okay, now you should see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's good. Okay, as, as I was saying, um, in this slide, I reported a callback function that the GBSOC is calling when uh, executing the code of an application comes across that specific instruction. In this case, is the branch equal immediate instruction. As you can see, there are some special uh, instructions, some special functions that are used to support the performance counters, but uh, more uh, importantly, there is a, a special function, ISS perf account taken branch, to evaluate if uh, the branch is taken or not. And it is for the, the particular case of the branch instruction. But for each new added instruction, we need to add a callback that will be called by the GBSOC. Okay, after that, uh, the GBSOC has been updated to support the core five extension. So we can run uh, and simulate uh, uh, some code, for example, some application codes on our GVSOC uh, integrating the Core 5 extensions, we need to move to Deja New to enable running the GCC test suite on GVSOC. Okay, here what we did was uh, creating a new baseboard for the simulator. Uh, as you can see, we uh, placed the GVSOC launcher named GVSOC Sim uh, and we included a pre compiled uh, runtime, basic runtime. And also we included a linker script 
uh, we also specified the stack size that our target platform is uh, actually supporting. So in this case, 32 kilobytes, just to prevent executing tests with more stack usage. Okay, consequently, on the GVSOC side, we need to create uh, the GVSOC launcher, so the GVSOC sim launcher. Uh, that is the script that Tishegnu will call at test time. Such script consists of three steps. First of all, we are going to generate uh, the application image for the simulated flash. Then we are going to download the application image uh, in the external simulated flash. And then uh, we are going to uh, run the application on the simulator. Okay, the application binary code is passed by Dejegnu. While uh, in each of these steps, uh, we need to specify the target platform uh, that we want to run. And uh, specifying, for example, here a target equal CD32 E4TP, we are telling GVSOC, the simulator, which IPs uh, we want to use in our system. Okay, these are the results when running GCC test suite on uh, GVSOC, in that case, the core five GCC against uh, uh, the GVSOC simulator. We achieved the result uh, that uh, I reported under the column core five. I also reported the results when testing RISC five GCC against a CGEN simulator. Of course, uh, you can see there is, that there is a mismatch in the total number of tests since our core five GCC version is a little behind the RISC five one. By the way, uh, what turns up is that uh, our toolchain has many more unexpected failures and unresolved test cases that uh, we are going to address. Okay, digging uh, more in depth in the unexpected failure test, we found out that uh, the main um, issues were two. First of all, on the simulator side, uh, we find that many tests, uh, of course, were deploying uh, standard, lib, uh, standard new lib functions, but the simulator originally supported a new lib custom implementation, including only a subset of uh, these functions. Thus, we extended the GVSOC support to the standard new lib with the system called handling support and uh, all the new lib related tests passed. On the other side, on the other side, sorry, we found that many old tests were not implementing the stack side check uh, since uh, um, with the JAGNU you can specify a directive to say that if your target uh, as not enough stack, you, you can skip that test. For that purpose, what we did, we added in those tests the, the JACNU directive to skip the test if the test does not support the test, um, test stack size. Thus, all the, these tests became unsupported tests. We are planning to upstream uh, these tests in which we added the, the JACNU directives. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, we still have uh, mm, some unexpected errors. Many of them are related to the linked opt optimization error, to the linked optimization. Uh, but we still need to figure out if the error source is our compiler, some missing Deja new directives in the test, or uh, some kind of simulator-related issue. Uh, and so we are, we are trying to figure out where is the, 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 the error source. We also have failing tests with the optimization of trigonometric functions. But this could not be an issue for us, since uh, generally um, when doing some uh, optimization, when using the optimization for trigonometric function, what is uh, mathematically right is not always computational right, because on our target platform, we might have different roundings, uh, data type bit length, uh, and so uh, this might not be an issue. Uh, now I will end uh, over to Jessica, who will continue the presentation by talking about uh, upstreaming issues that we are currently facing. So go ahead, Jessica. Great, thanks, Enrico. Um, so to up from our core five specific GCC toolchain. And there's a process that's well established for upstreaming vendor specific versions of toolchains. For example, on this slide, we show the standard MIPS, MIPS toolchain and two manufacturer versions. The same is true of other architectures such as Spark. So the GNU linker is not target specific, but supports all architectures simultaneously. For RISC V, this means that all vendor variants are supported simultaneously. With multiple vendors and multiple custom extensions, this causes something of a challenge, but for which we believe there's a solution. 
So many RISC-5 ISA extensions, including the extensions in Core 5, use instructions that will need custom relocating in the linker. Um, in our case, this occurs for the hardware loop and immediate branching extensions. So in FESH 2 bit ELF, there, there are 256 possible relocations. For standard RISC-5, 59 are already in use, with 134 reserved for future standard use. So that's 64 relocations that are reserved for vendor-specific extensions. The challenge is that 64 re relocations is not enough to allocate different ones to all the many RISC-5 vendors. And in any case, this would require a central allocation authority that's able to ration a scarce resource. So at the moment, there are three solutions to the problem of RISC-5 vendor relocation clashes under consideration. So first of all, switching to 64-bit ELF would immediately give us a 32-bit field for the relocation number. 4 billion relocations would surely be enough for everyone, but using 64-bit ELF is wasteful for a 32-bit architecture. So all RISC-5 ELF files have an attribute section. The second approach is to use this to disambiguate overlapping relocations. The, arch the architecture string, for example, could enable specific subsets, providing control on a per file basis. However, if we have a call with multiple custom extensions, this could cause clashes where two different custom extensions wish to use the same custom relocation, but with different semantics. And in addition, um, per file basis is not particularly relevant. With LTO, everything becomes one huge file. So our final option is to use a second disambiguation relocation to indicate the vendor for the instruction, which would give control on a pair of instruction basis. So the advantage of this is that using a pair of relocations is already used in RISC-5 to implement relaxation. So we already have an established infrastructure. Um, so this last option seems to be the most flexible and easiest to adopt in RISC-5. So I'll look into detail about uh, what we might need to implement this. So we'll need to extend the ELF table with one new standard relocation, RISC-5 Reloc ID, to identify which set of vendor relocations to use when interpreting a vendor-specific extension. The 32-bit relocation add-end is used as an ID for the vendor. So I've also shown the first of the Core 5 specific relocations, so that's RISC-5 CV PC Rail URS1. Um, under this scheme, any instruction wishing to use this would also specify RISC-5 reloc ID with the Core 5 ID to indicate the Core 5 interpretations of the relocations 192 to 255 is um, what needs to be used. Um, so if we, if we have a look here, we can see Core 5 and Vendor A. Um, on the first line of both snippets, we can see that they both have a um, different relocation with uh, sharing the relocation number 192. Um, and then we have the instruction and its corresponding relocations. So looking at the second relocation of the two, RISC-5 reloc ID, we see absolute plus some value. So it's this value that's unique to the vendor, and it's this magic number that we use to figure out which relocation to use. So this field is 32 bits long, so that means we have 4 billion IDs to use. Um, obviously, we still need a central authority to issue IDs, but as it's 32 bits now, it's not really a scarce resource anymore. So this could simply be administered through RISC-5 International, solely needing to check for abuse. Um, so I hope to work on the changes to the GNU linker to support this functionality later this year. So we'll be doing the work in close collaboration with the RISC-5 International PSABI task group, which is led by Keto Cheng, um, who I think is actually here today, um, in order to ensure that we come up with a solution which works for the whole RISC-5 um, community. So um, getting involved, and um, we strongly encourage you to get involved um, in the project as a developer, and we welcome your code and um, pull requests against our code bases on GitHub. Um, I'm the project lead for the GNU Tools project at the Open Hardware Group, so if you want to find out anything about the mailing list or any discussion forums, then please just drop me a message to the email um, on this slide. Okay, so this talk has been presented by Enrico and myself, but it's the work of a much larger team. Um, and we look forward to answering any of your questions. Thanks for listening. Hi, Jessica. It's Kito Chen. Can you hear me? Hi, Kito. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think your uh, uh, proposal is kind of great for the relocation. In fact, I have similar uh, solution come to my mind before, but I think it's still some 
part could be improved since the vendor ID location is kind of uh, an issue to me. Since let's means we need a centralized place to yeah. location that it's <laughs> or, uh, oh it's it's kind of problem. So I yeah. think it could be uh become a mystery with your proposal second and the proposal three. I mean the vendor ID is could be become a profile based string table. I mean uh uh using the extension then as a index rather than a fixed vendor ID and the mapping table we could store in a spatial section and then I guess we could resolve the centralized location issue. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So so personally I, I am I'm open minded for the accepting the vendor stuffs and yeah. I guess we, we can have more discussion in next session. I mean the five yeah. BOF. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. No, yeah I mean I think we have to talk about this like pretty broadly, <laughs> what we're doing right now is not working, right? Like we have the same thing yeah. at the the whatever it is with the D one. Like it's so it's, something's gotta change. <laughs> yeah. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. I think we do actually have some other questions. Okay, thanks. We can uh, maybe answer to some questions. Let me see. So the first one I think is, is, is someone else. Oh no. The first one seems to be, do you plan to extend um, the GDP oh, yeah. risk -off simulator as well? At the moment, no, we don't have plans to extend that. Um, but we, we do have obviously the Verilator model and GVSOC, so two, two different simulators that have, I suppose, two, two separate purposes. Yeah, uh, uh, I think yeah, the, the, the plan for now is not to extend to the GDB risk price simulator. I know that there are some guys in Zurich that are also collaborating, that uh, they have made a simulator for GDB, but uh, it's only uh, uh, the core simulator, okay? GVSOC simulator is supporting uh, also the full platform simulation, so it's uh, more useful also for other purposes. But is it okay. use usable from GDB? No. Okay. No, no, no. It's uh, completely different. Uh, okay. The, okay, Jim Wilson. The GDB risk file sim still needs uh, 20 pages streamed from... Uh, That's not a question. I don't think. I actually don't think. Yeah. Having a brief look, I don't think. Okay. There's actually let's... Any more questions for us. I think it just seems to be a bit of... There's a discussion going on there about... CGM. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That seems I to don't be see any other questions. Okay. So thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, Jose. And Lovely. for your work. Thank it's you. very nice.